All right, Road to Pine Valley game plan. Here we are, we're seven episodes in, and we've scored some great courses in this series. You probably saw them all this week. We have Matita Conk National, a course that I am so excited to show you guys. I played it a couple times, but I have never filmed it. And in fact, I don't think anyone's ever filmed it. Hello? Hey, Derek, we're at the gate. All right, I'll open it right now. Thanks. It's so private. We're in. We're in. Step one complete. <laughs> <laughs> so we pull into the facility here at Matita Conk National, and the first thing that came to my mind is big. This is a big place. You have 27 fantastic holes, and you also have a facility, a practice facility that's just absolutely unmatched in the area. This thing is vast. It is expansive. Uh, just incredible just to look out over this practice facility and it almost from a distance looks like the size of an entire golf course on its own. So the first thing I'm thinking is I have to tip my hat to the grounds crew here just thinking about the number of acres here that they need to maintain and the shape that this place is in. I mean you're gonna see it. It is Incredible. Hole number one of the tournament layout is our 19th hole. Um, a big dog leg left, pretty indicative of the rest of the golf course. Uh, risk reward right out of the box. From the blue tees, a really good number is 240 yards. From the championship tees, a good number is about 270 yards to avoid the pinching in of the fairways, the cross bunkers, the angled bunkers, the fescue eyebrows, all the things that you're gonna run across when you try to hit it 300 plus. Um, you either navigate that and you get over them or you don't and you have serious problems. Fresh glove, freshy. freshy. Big week of golf for us. You though. get a nice place like this, you bust out a fresh glove, you know? Yep, no doubt. Big week is right. Playing here, Somerset on Ooh. Thursday. What Come a week on. of golf. We, we have a, a saying here that bogey is your friend at Matita Conk. So when you do hit into those areas, your best bet is to take it out sideways, throw it in the middle of the green, two putt, bogey, get out of there. Because it's, you know, really dangerous spots that cause doubles and triples. This place is special, huh? Yeah, dude. Wow, incredible. And interesting about the sand, I'm curious to feel it. Best in the country? Be right on it, be right on it. Let's go. So one thing that's been a theme so far in this series, is we played a lot of golf courses that are very old, established courses. Been here for a long time. In fact, we even played the oldest country club in the state. But here we're getting something different. Matita Conk is a much newer golf club. It was first opened in 1987. And the thing is, since that time, it has maintained itself in the ranks according to that Golf Digest list that we've been working off of. It's been a top golf course every single year since it opened. And you're gonna see why as we go through this golf course. Get in. Yes. That's how you start it. Well done. Two pars. Come on. Well done. Maybe it's our day, boys. So the second hole is like the first hole that you see with a little bit of teeth. If you miss the fairway at all, you're gonna end up in that fescue. It's gonna make for a double or even triple bogey. And that's what I'm most nervous about out here. If you don't keep the ball in the fairway out here, you're going to make two or three more shots than you should. So it's uh, it's about playing smart golf. And the second hole is where we really start to see the fight at Matita Kaga. It came at you right away. Um, tough course, but uh, I've got some ideas on how to challenge it the strategy to put together today to try to score. We'll see. Hey, I'm quickly seeing that it doesn't take much to make a mistake here. No. <laughs> uh, just a couple feet. It doesn't take much. And I tried to play the safe play with three wood. Yeah, you did. Nope, oh, yanked. It's all right, left side. Nope, that's, that's, yankered. Bounce. You're okay. You see bounces, you're okay. All right, fourth hole, stepping up to the tee box and one of the guys in our group, you know, was like, hey, this is uh, the toughest hole out here today, so. It was a long one. I just stood up there. I grip it and rip it. Great drive down the middle at 148 home. Let's see if we can make some magic. Fly ball. Oh. All right, so it came up a little short, but here I get that first test of that new sand that they were raving about. So uh, good bunker shot here. Uh, great leave for my, uh, my next shot. Yeah, he likes his sand game, folks. A great play. Yeah. 
All right. Oh, I wanted that par so bad. You have no idea. It would have been a great, a great get there. But hey, they said bogeys are your friend at Matita Conk National, so I will smile walking off this green with a bogey. Holes number five and number seven in the tournament, of course, uh, which are our 23rd and 25th holes, are really intricate par threes. Uh, 23 from the back tee, elevated tee, wind always coming across and in your face with water short and water left and water long. Really, really difficult hole to kind of flight it down. Um, deep bunker on the right, fescue on the right. There is nowhere to miss the golf ball. So you go to the middle number, you hit it to the best of your ability and you hope you navigate the water um, because bailing right is even worse. And now you're chipping it down toward the water out of a really difficult lie, down slope. the pin. Go in. Yes! yes! Good read. Yes! That's it. And that's how it's done here at Matita Conk. Just like that. Great mm -hmm. shot. That's it, we're right over that cup. All right, first par five here. Um, it's the sixth hole on our route. And I ended up pushing the tee shot right. Was able to find it, it was in that fescue. And the play here is just don't try to be aggressive. Don't be brave. There's a bunch of windows, but the trees are tall, but there's a lot of them. So the best bet here is that just let's ride it down the fairway, keep it low, give myself an approach home. It's a par five. Maybe we can do something special. Oh, I went left of that tree. You're out. Yep, we're out. <laughs> All right, came up a little short on that approach shot, but par felt really good on this sixth hole. Okay. So one thing that I just have to keep coming back to is just how amazed I am with the conditions of this golf course. All I can say here is that there's an attention to detail in the culture here that we really haven't seen in other places. And we've played some incredible conditioned golf courses. What it is is just, a lot of pride that you can feel that the staff has here in the way they present their golf club. And I'll tell you, a perfect example is the fact that they started a bunker renovation when they just didn't like the way the sand was coming out. They took it all out and brought new sand in. If that doesn't tell you that they've got a real love for what they do here, I don't know what will. Get in. Yes. yes! Woo! Birdie. Thank you. Birdie out here feels like eagle, to be honest with you. So. That was nice, good feeling. Maybe there's momentum before we make the turn. So the ninth hole is a monster par four. It's big dog leg right, 470 yards from the back tee. Uh, two kind of showcase trees on the right-hand side that you have to navigate. Not ideal to try to cut the corner unless you are a 320 carry person. Otherwise, again, the 270 number down the left side gives you, you know, a 200 yard shot in over water tilted left to right green, big bunker on the left, water on the right, fescue long. Again, really no bailout. So if you're in a good position to go for the green, okay. If you're not, best thing to do is lay up to the 100 plate, throw it in the middle of the green, take your par or your bogey and get out of there. Move on to the next hole. Get it. If I hit it harder, I think that was it. That's it, man. You know? Two good pars. So the 10th hole is a perfect example of what we keep hearing about how these fairways get tighter the further you hit it. I hit what I would say was probably my best drive so far of the day. And I thought maybe, you know, it was, it was, it was headed towards the, the right side of the fairway. I thought maybe it'll hang up on the fairway, stay in the fairway, if at the very worst, maybe that deep rough would grab it. But nope, we ran right through it. Yeah ended up in another tough spot here, and it's just about recovery. I'll tell you, there's so many instances out here where it's just, just missing your shot a little bit, you end up in a spot where it just almost takes par out of play, and there's the motto, now we're just playing for bogey again. Hmm. Tried to give it a little more pace. There are very few hole locations on every green. This was an RTJ and Rule Witch special where Almost every hole in the golf course has a spine in it. And some of them run across the green, some of them run front to back, some run at an angle. And you have to know in advance which side you can miss it on. So if the pin's on the left, you do not want to be on the right side of the spine and vice versa. I'm just gonna call this the big boy par five. It it's challenges you. 
So it's unique because, you know, you gotta get a great shot in the middle of the fairway, almost right side of the fairway. Oh, yes, yes, no, yes. Thought it was going left, but it ended up being perfect. Yep. Holy cow. Power draw. Yeah. Ah, uh, toe draw. These guys know, well, sort of know what they're doing. And this green, when you see it, it's just ridiculous. It's surrounded by bunkers, it's long. Um, if you come at this green at a different angle and another angle, it, it could be a whole different, different score for you. So shot placement going into this green is very important. Um, we got that little scouting report. We saw it on the drone, everything like that. Um, so good drives. Frank and I had two good drives out there. And then for me, it was just next shot, lay it up again because you cannot go for it here. Pretty scary approach, huh? <laughs> Look at the shape of this green and everything. All right, I'm gonna block all that out. 140 shot. Just a little short in the bunker. I thought I hit that so crisp. I thought it was on the green, but something up there knocked that thing down. Maybe I just didn't have enough club. Green side bunker. And sure enough, the green side bunker here, it just changed the game on this, uh, this hole for me. I was going where I was in the bunker, hitting four to uh, walking off this one with a double bogey. So that's how Matita Conk National can get you. So being, I would say, at least in the halfway mark, maybe even a little bit further on this road to Pine Valley, I, I gotta say, I, I continue to feel so incredibly fortunate and blessed and thankful for all the courses who've led us out there to play. It, it's something that, it's been fun making this series, but it's also something we're gonna personally remember forever. Um, and yeah, there are some courses that have said no, and you know, I wish that the answer was something else. I also, part of me has to respect it. These are private clubs, private membership. I may not want guys coming through with cameras, and I get that. Um, but, you know, it, it, in some ways it's a, it's a shame because we really want to be able to show the world so much incredible golf that's here. So we're fortunate when we get to get out there and play them, and the, and the ones who've unfortunately said no, you know, it's, it's a shame. I wish the answer was something different, but how much can we complain? We're playing some of the best golf that you can imagine, and even more so, for all the great golf you've seen so far, the golf that's still yet ahead of us, oh man, it's gonna, it's gonna knock your socks off. The 15th was, according to the scorecard, like the easiest hole on the course, but it had my number. It was a par three. Oh, I, I ended up hitting into the hazard right, and I had to drop and hit three onto the screen. I ended up walking off with a five. Uh, and if there's one hole I can go back and do over again, it is 15, because a more smooth shot off the tee and I'd be looking at putting for two or three instead of walking off with five. So 15, I wanna come back just for you. <laughs> wow, like they say, bogeys are easy out here. They are. Par's not so much. <laughs> I think 16 worked out to be my favorite hole on the entire course. Not only is it visually stunning, but it is a real shot maker's thinking man's hole. Uh, on the, it's a dog leg to the right. On the right, it's protected by a bunker. And it's a little bit blind after that, after the tee shot, on the tee shot. And I can guarantee there's plenty of people who see that bunker, pull out that driver and try to hit it over. But the fairway is sloped down away from that bunker. So even if you're patting yourself on the back because you cleared the bunker with your drive, what you're probably not gonna see is that your ball is most likely in the water on the other side. You really need to hit less than driver here I'm finding because as you, you know, you're gonna bring that water in, you're gonna bring a whole world of hurt. So here I hit less than driver, ended up in a good spot, gave myself a good look at this green and it's a challenging shot. It's a pretty shot with the water left a little bit of almost a punch ball vibe there, but it is visually one of the most stunning holes I think on the entire golf course. It's also one of the most challenging if you're not committed to playing it smart. 17 was uh, a great 
great hole because it made you think there's a bunker in the middle of the fairway. Uh, it just shrinks, the fairway shrinks like this as you go over it. And you know that going in because we've done our research. So we figured at this point, just get it over the bunker. There's a little bit right where you can miss. You'll be in some, some, some fairway or rough on the right side. So driver was definitely the play and uh, it felt good to hit this high draw over that bunker and leave myself with a nice wedge home. Come on, Frank. <laughs> Did you go long? <laughs> I flew over everything. What's the matter with you? Either I shot it wrong or I felt the wind. Didn't, didn't you see the wind was going hard at, right? It was going I, at me, right? Yeah. I think you just caught a flyer. You got a flyer on that one. One short, one long. Go, go, go. All right, one short, one long. One short, one long. Come on, guys, get it together. All right, if I make this par from back there, then this is incredible. Something to remember. No juice. No juice. <laughs> no juice. <laughs> Give it a little juice, no Frank. Juice. No juice. Closing hole. Seen from the tee, like it's a big boy hole. It, it, it's probably going to play pretty tough, especially for the pros when they come here next month, especially back on the tips. You have to get a good drive out there, and then it's an elevated green. One club, maybe two clubs more. Long drive, that one. All right, this is the last hole we're filming with Zach yes. before he leaves us for Vermont. So we got to spam the comments with good luck, Zach. Thank you, guys. Yeah, bittersweet. Yeah. I would say bittersweet's the word. Ooh, that's going to be fun. Yeah, that's going to be fun. I don't know what I hit. A rock? I don't know what I hit. A root or a rock. All right, you gotta up and down for the ages yeah, that's here. that's it. All right, Frank's <laughs> about to up and down this, but guys, I hope you're loving the Road to Pine Valley series. This has been an incredible course. Actually, every course has been incredible. It's like one after the next. It's like nonstop incredible golf in here. And we got Somerset Hills Golf Club next episode. So stay tuned for that. Let's watch this guy up and down to close it out. Oh, I love it, Frank. I love it. I heard a thud. Now does it hold? Oh no, it rolled up there. It did, didn't yep, it? Yep, it's gonna be tough. It gets you. Two tricky shots coming up. No, Ooh. oh, there's say no way. All right, we got a chance. Question here is do I, I got a lot of options. Do I blade a wedge, a hybrid, just kind of like Hit it without like a putt hybrid or try to putt it. That's a tough one, man. I think I can actually get the putter on it. Yeah, you just gotta get it started. That's it, right? Yeah, I think you got it. Yeah, just like that. Just like that. Just like that. Oh! oh. All right, take that away. Almost. Oh! Turn around too soon. <laughs> That's Matita Kong for you right there. Thought I had it. In the next episode of Inside the Gates. This is the one, right? This is the one. This is the day we've been waiting for. Been dreaming a long time of hitting this tee shot. Yeah, you have been. <laughs> I don't know if I slept much last night. <laughs>